My understanding of the situation is that in October, the uh, Strategic Planning Committee granted outline planning permission for the new supermarket development on the Smithfield site. The developers have now come back to the council uh, with actually a revised set of plans, as I understand it, and they've watered down uh, the commitments that they made at the meeting in October. There's nothing suspicious in this, or, or untoward, or strange, or weird, or whatever. This is a perfectly legitimate way of just making sure that members, as democratically accountable people, are happy uh, with what the officers and ourselves are suggesting. I think we have a very strong case. Uh, whether the councillors will wish to listen to it and hear it is another question. We'll find out the answer in the next hour or two. Well, essentially people are here because they're extremely angry that assurances that were given by the Smithfield developers about the shuttle bus and potentially about the cinema aren't being honoured. Obviously it's for the developer to explain why they wish to come back with a, a much weaker offering. Um, clearly the financial climate has been very difficult over the last six months, that may have had something to do with it. But frankly that's their problem, not ours. And we, we don't want it to end up being an even bigger problem for us than it is already. And there's an idea which I've seen in the submissions made by the coalition, which are entirely incorrect, where they talk about that we will, you know, sort of unilaterally withdraw the funding and stop the bus, etc. We can't do anything unilaterally. It would have to be done with the agreement of the council. And were, let's look at a black day, that the, that the shuttle bus isn't successful, we have every confidence that it will be, but were it not to be, then a sum of money, the residual amount of money which would have cost us for running it, would be paid to the council to go into public transport. So there's no sleight of hand, there's no... But the developers have taken the unusual step of running the bus service themselves, no. rather than paying an upfront sum to the, the council to do it. No. So once the development's in place, what is there? Let's just what stop is there. Let's just stop there. Carry on, then. Because that's not an unusual thing. If you go to um, uh, lots of towns and lots of cities, you will see a bus being driven. It's not part of the public transport network. It's not part of the public transport service. It's known as the, you know, uh, Tesco shuttle bus or the Sainsbury shuttle bus or the Waitrose shuttle bus or whatever. Um, it, it, the councils don't run these things. These are these are run by developers and operators. If if uh, the developers run the shuttle bus rather than an upfront a payment being made to the council, um, what is their incentive? once they've, you know, their development has been accepted and they've got, got their money, um, what is their incentive to run that service to a, a high standard? Well, I've already dealt with that. We can't, we can't unilaterally stop running the bus shuttle. It would have to be done in, with the agreement, the written agreement, of the council. So we can't unilaterally do it. But and, and I make the point again. But if, if the developer runs a poor bus service, which is underused, um, it then will be why, in a position... Why would, why, would, why would anybody, in a commercially aggressive marketplace, why would anybody run anything which was a poor service? Because there's no financial incentive for the developer to run a good, a good service. I don't agree with you. Well... What is what does the developer gain to it from it? It's simply a cost to the developer. No, no, no absolute rubbish. Well, what does the developer gain? Then? Well, what if you if if you have a successful bus shuttle service, which is taking people, uh, uh, delivering those linked trips which we talked about through the planning process to the town centre, from the town centre to the development and vice versa, and that brings people into it who don't have access to a private motor car or who don't want to use a car. Or you know, or they can't get a bus from where they live, or whatever it might happen to be, and that's bringing people into the development who've got their credit card, their checkbook, or their wallet, or their purse, and they're going to be customers. It is, it's financially advantageous from an operator's point of view to to make sure that the bus shuttle is successful because it increases footfall. Well, it it only increases footfall if if the uh, benefits that. Uh accrue to the developer from running the bus service outweigh it, its cost and that no, might no, not be the case. No, no, no. This, we, we said right from the start one of the key issues was connectivity to the town centre and the shuttle bus delivers that. So this sort of negative pessimism, this idea that somehow or another we're trying a sleight of hand, it is a nonsense. <laughs> Thank you.
quite disgusting, really, the fact that um, this is something that's happening to our town and we're not allowed in to hear what's going to happen. Are you surprised that we haven't been able to get in? No, I'm not really, because they... We have had other, meet, other meetings and there's been quite large numbers of people there and they were asked, could we have a bigger room? So they've done this on purpose so that everyone can't get in to hear what's exactly going on. It's disgusting. What, what was the outcome of the meeting then, Martin? Well, that's a very good question. There's been no firm decisions made today. It's, it's deferred for future, future, future decisions or future consideration. OK, thank you very much. Okay. I think it's, uh, I think it's very unsatisfactory. Um, there was a long, long debate in there about uh, the shuttle bus and the provision of the shuttle bus service and the importance of that provision as part of the agreement to um, award the, uh, the development to the Smithfield uh, site. Um, and yet we've now got um, an agreement where they're going to talk a little bit more about the shuttle bus but it could still be closed down within three to five years frankly if the shuttle bus is not successful then the development is not successful that was the whole basis upon which they approved the development in the first place so any provision which enables the closure of the shuttle bus actually condemns the site so will they be closing the site in five years if the shuttle bus is unsuccessful? I think not. And there will be no linkage, therefore, between the town centre and the Smithfield site. And the irredeemable damage that we've been concerned about to the town centre will then take place. Um, so I think they've given that power to the, to the um, officers to go away and talk to developers about some new signs and some new dustbins. Um, that's not enough. That's not going to guarantee the success of this scheme. Uh, and I'm very disappointed. And that seemed to be rushed through at the end of that meeting, driven by the fact that this will be the last meeting of this committee before it's disbanded. Um, why on earth is the future of Oswald Street being determined by a group who are in a rush to get this off their plates um, before they're disbanded by, by Shropshire Council? I, I don't know, and I'm very cross about it. Finally, um, are the Liberty Mercy and the developers haven't promised uh, more than they can afford then? We have agreed, uh, we have never promised more than we could afford and that over the last four and a half years that this proposal has been in the, in the public domain. And rather, uh, not that it's terribly fashionable probably today after PMQs yesterday of just sort of quoting TV ads, but I'm, I've always described our planning application as sort of Ron Seal. What you see is what, you know, what's on the tin. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.